What's up, everyone? Here to do Corco No Basket episode 30. And this week's episode, in my opinion, it was really good. It was uh, exactly the reason why I watched this sh series, and I'm really interested in this show. First of all, I love, like, the strategical parts of it just how everything usually is happening for a reason like when a team is winning like there's a certain style of basketball they're playing or a certain player can do uh, certain things and it just really catches my interest man episodes like these go by so fast because they're so good you just want more but um it was very interesting and i do also have to say is i love a series that's unpredictable and I did not see this coming from Midorima, just because we know what most of the uh, Generation of Miracles are like. And Kisei just recently got changed at the end of Season 1, and Midorima just never seemed like that type of character. Like, I don't know, like, obviously I feel like people like Aoime, like, he will never change and, and unless he loses, but... Yeah, I just thought it was interesting where they really went with it, and it was just so up and down. Like, one second, Shutoku has the advantage, then Siren has the advantage. Like, it was just really interesting, and I really enjoyed the episode, but um, a lot happened in it, so I'm not going to, like, go play-by-play play like I kind of usually do, so I'm just going to go over, like, the main points and what I thought was interesting and some of the skills that were cool to me, and yeah, I'll let you guys know. So the episode starts off in the beginning of the second quarter and Surin is up, but a lot of the uh, members of Surin, they're all saying that they're a little uneasy, like some doesn't seem right, like they just know that this team is a lot better than this and they're just waiting for them to break out their plan and Kagami is blocking Midorima, but um, he's still getting a little bit tired and his teammates are starting to notice and they would have Corco, uh, like you some misdirection and help some people out but he's on lockdown by Taiko like the uh, freshman point guard from Shutoku as the uh, eagle's eye I believe, or hawkeye and he can like see everything on the court so Corco really can't do anything with that and um Midorima he starts to throw in some pump fakes and like it's a little confusing but Kagami touches the first one and he ends up like making him miss and Corico uh, grabs the pass and he throws it down the court and they get a quick bucket. But um, he starts, he pump fakes again and he goes around him and pulls up Midorima, but then Kyoshi uh, helps out and he helps him over. And then that's when we go to a Midorima flashback and we find out that Midorima, and as one of the characters on his team said, or the captain, I believe, of their team, the big man, he says that, wow, such a prideful man to say that. Like, he must really seriously want to win. And it, it shocked me. I'm not going to lie. It, it really surprised me. I don't know what you guys, it definitely surprised me. But um, then Midorima starts passing, so it's leaving Siren at a huge disadvantage. They're, they have to double-team Midorima now, pretty much. And it's like... Three, it's four on three every time, and Shutoku is already a really good team. So, yeah, that was a bit of trouble that they were going through. But um, even though, like, things were kind of falling apart, um, everybody, well, some of the people that knew him have confidence in Kelshi. And Kelshi talks about how he, he's just pretty much encouraging them. He doesn't have a real plan, but he says we need to take Tor or Corico out. And I just thought it was really funny about how depressed Corico was about it. And I thought it was really funny. But um, he, he ends up saying that they're going to have to double team Midorima, uh, Kelshi, and Kagami. And the rest of them are just going to have to try to protect the inside. But that's not really going to work. So what we find out is another thing. That's why I love the ups and downs of this episode. Like we go back to, um, or apparently Siren goes back to their old style of play. Apparently they're, or they were a run and gun team and they weren't bad, but they were mostly inside and out. And <clears throat> Kyoshi and Hugo were just known as like, uh, the in, in out duo so i just thought that was really really interesting and it was pretty cool in my opinion just because they like had another trick up their sleeves so they they just are really good at scoring a lot and the only problem with that is as soon as they miss all they have to do is pass the ball to midorima wherever he is on the court and it's an automatic make so uh, <laughs> 
yeah, I just thought it was really, really, like, interesting how they just, like, went from CERN being good, then all back to Shutoku, like, has her trump card. And we see go over to Kisei and Momoi, and he's saying the only problem is uh, CERN can't really stop uh, Shutoku was, I mean, yeah, Siren can't really stop Shutoku as well as Siren can, or as well as Shutoku can stop them. So right after that, we jump right into halftime, and <clears throat> Kisei and Momoi, they're just talking about who do they think will have the advantage, and Kisei says, uh, as I said before, that he, they really don't have the advantage, like, uh, Siren, and Shutoku will have the advantage for longer, and Siren will fall first, but... Uh, Kisei said that's without the Phantom Six Man, and he's the real deal. So I just wonder, man, like, uh, will Korko ever get, like, athletic abilities? Like, I feel like it would kind of take away from his character somewhat, but if they gave him something that wasn't too overpowered, but it still had a nice advantage to it, I think that would be pretty cool. But, um... Yeah, anyway, so apparently, every uh, even Coach, she's just, depending on his like phantom drive and that's what the what she thinks can turn the tables and after that um taco like they we start the um third quarter and taco like uh, gets the ball and he's about to drive because made a rim of pump fakes and passes to him and they he fakes like he's gonna drive then they're using even more teamwork He's kicking it back to Midorima when the defense is getting back and it's throwing them off guard and he's just shooting. And yeah, man, it's just looking like a huge mess for sure and for sure. So after that, one of the um players from uh, Siren's team noticed that Midorima was actually smiling, which is really weird to them. And I just found it kind of weird too. And um, I think he's really starting to enjoy like playing team basketball like he likes being good but like playing with his team kind of like Kisei uh found out at the uh end of last season and I'm not gonna lie I think it's really cool just because like the whole team factor thing like it's pretty realistic like no player can just do everything by himself but I do think that basketball is more fun when everybody's getting along and playing good at the same time and you're winning because everybody loves to win but um not only on top of Midorima playing well and being happy about how his team is playing, uh, we come to find out that they've been studying all their plays and they pretty much know everything about them, all their favorite plays. And I just thought it was a funny joke when some of the seniors saw the ball and one of the seniors laid it up and he was like, how come you didn't dunk it? And he was like, everybody can't do that. I thought that was really funny. But, um... Then uh, Taco talks about how uh, he's different because he hears some people saying that Midorima is different. And he says he, he's the same, but he kind of did it up saying, well, I guess he is different. But he says people on their team may think he's weird and stuff like that. But sometimes when they're all playing together, they, they see him smile. And I just really like what they did with Midorima's character for sure. And um, obviously, I always go for sure because, like, they're the main protagonist and they're the underdog. So, I mean, I like them. But the Generation of Miracles, I just think is definitely interesting how now the uh, Mangaka is adding, like, character development into the story and I think it's really interesting but um after that we just have Corco coming in and their hope everybody on the bench is just hoping he can make a change and shift the tides but you never know with this series man sometimes you think they're gonna win they don't and especially with like um now that things are getting a lot more competitive like I don't know it's really hard to say but I definitely enjoyed this week's episode a lot. Like, I thought it was a really good episode of Corco No, and it was probably the best episode so far of the season for sure. But um, that's all I have. Let me know what you guys think, though, and thanks.